Hello, BookTube. Well, it's another library tour. This is the sixth and final shelf of the thin west wall bookcase. <laughs> we made it all the way to the end. Uh, and I am once again up on a step stool. When I told this to my muscular teenagers, they said, Dude, you're risking your life for people. They only like you because you send them books. And I said, That's not true. I mean, that would be like someone only liking me because I buy them lunch. To which the response was, Dude, harsh. <laughs> Oh, he shuts them up, though. <laughs> so I thought, once again, we would do the transverse books first to get them out of the way, make the other books easier to get to. Uh, in this case, uh, because the shelf is so high up off the ground, I made the transverse books little. <laughs> I don't know why. Something about the opticals seemed right. I, instead of large uh, hardcovers sitting transverse, these are smaller hardcovers. Uh, the first one being Hoisinger's Life of Erasmus. There he is right there. In a little hardcover. These, these, uh, these little pocket-sized hardcovers that uh, I, I, I have never seen Heisinger's Life of Erasmus in a larger volume. I would love it if it did. I would love it if there was a big, for instance, a big floppy spine trade paperback with deckle edges and you know the, the French flaps and everything and lots of illustrations. I would love that but uh, it's because it's a fantastic Erasmus biography. But uh, I've never seen it, so uh, uh, I, keep, I keep hold of this one because I love going back to it. And then the next one, also uh, little, also little hardcovers. This is a three volume. This is Froude's biography of Henry VIII in three volumes. He's such a fantastic writer uh, that you just, I just had to ha have to have this book. I have to, I, whenever, I, especially now that I'm, I'm writing about the Tudors all over again at, over at Open Letters Monthly, uh, I, you go back to this guy all the time because, not just because of his mastery of his original sources, but also because he's such a, a witty writer, so quotable. Uh, I wish that there were a great big one-volume hardcover or a great big one-volume trade paperback of this biography of Henry VIII. I've never seen it. If any of you, especially in the UK, have ever seen a one-volume of this, I'd love to know about it. I would. That's that's a rare thing that I'd be willing to buy online if I could see it. Uh, but as it is, I'll just keep these old volumes that I've found of the Brattle. Uh, and then we do with the uh, the normal books on the shelf, including the, the first one being something we've seen on this channel before. This is a perfect example of how great the Brattle bookshop is here in Boston. Uh, this is Bob Asprey's Life of Frederick the Great. And when I last showed it to you, when I first showed it to you, rather, I showed you a trade paperback. And I remember complaining at the time, this was in a, the biography bookshelf, I think, uh, I remember complaining that the trade paperback, as sturdy as it was, was falling apart because I love this book. Uh, I, I returned to it often enough uh, so that it was an, too much of a strain on, on the trade paperback. And I said at the time, the hardcover will show up at the Brattle. Everything shows up at the Brattle, and sure enough, it did. Uh, so I, I put it in here. I put it here in this room. I figured it, I love the book so much, I might as well. Uh, and then the next one, talk about love so much. This is a, a Leatherbound gift uh, set of the two-volume... Henry Pringle Life of William Howard Taft uh, in, the, in the leather with the gold gilt pages and everything. Uh, as part of a presidential library series, I think. Uh, I think this was Encounter Books or uh, the Library of the U.S. Presidents. The Easton Press uh, did this. And they, they, the Pringle is the one you want to do if you're going to do Taft. This is huge. Again, I would love it if there were a great big hardcover of this book, uh, it's because it's fantastic. It is still, after all this time, I think this is 100 years old, after all this time, it's still by far the best, uh, no, 1960, or 1939, yeah. Um, still the best biography of, of Taft that's ever been written. Uh, and I go back to it all the time, which is why I'm very glad that it's uh, that it's a sewn binding leather brown edition because it, it can take a pounding, and I've given it one. Uh, the next one, <laughs> the next one's a bit of a troublemaker, but I really liked it. I highly recommend it. It's it's Shakespeare by another name. This is a biography of Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford, who is uh, considered by many to be the prime candidate for being Shakespeare. If the man from Stratford is not the person who wrote the plays. Uh, with the main impediment being that Oxford died uh, while the career of the plays was still going strong, unless the dating is wrong. That's a whole video for a whole other time, the Shakespeare authorship question. I could talk about it for two hours easily, I could. If you've got a local library or auditorium and you need a paid speaker, you let me know. I'll give you a two-hour presentation on the authorship question that will have them rolling in the aisles. <laughs> uh, uh, 
But this this was published by uh, what is it? Gotham Books. It was a it was a big deluxe hardcover. Then it was a paperback. It's had, in terms of Shakespeare authorship questions, uh, aside from the books that say that Shakespeare wrote his plays and that the authorship question is all bogus. In terms of books written saying that the authorship question is valid and that there are better candidates, this is the one that in the 20th century that by far got the most accepted mainstream attention. It was it was reviewed everywhere. It was in bookstores piled up high. You don't usually see that, and I don't think you've seen it since. Uh, there's a reason for it. The book is tremendously good. Someone at Gotham Books, their reader, had to have seen that when they were looking at the, you know, the pitch in the first place. Uh, and then the the last book, <laughs> the last one is uh, it's royalty. <laughs> <laughs> we, didn't, we never get far from royalty in my biography section. This is uh, Uncle of Europe. It's a biography of Edward VII uh, by Gordon Brooke Shepherd, who was uh, a London journalist forever and ever. Uh, just, the, the, just a stereotypical hard-drinking London journalist who was tremendously good. Almost never wrote a word for public consumption that isn't reprintable, that isn't really, really readable. I wish that I had more of his stuff, but I think this is his best book. Uh, in fact, there might be a picture of... Yeah, there he is. Death's head. <laughs> uh, he wrote a bunch of, of histories that are all really good. And I don't have any of them. They'll all turn up at the Brattle. Uh, but this is the one that I wanted. Uh, because this is the one that makes a sober estimation of just how important Edward might have been. As opposed to being just, a, you know, a party-going, mistress-having popinjay. Uh, I like that. I like, I like serious attempts to give him credit. Because uh, I think he deserves quite a bit of it. Uh, and doesn't always get it from people that are perfectly happy to write books called Edward the Caresser. <laughs> but anyway, that is it. That is the final bookshelf of the thin West Wall bookcase. And the only reason that there aren't books that there isn't there aren't books on top is because the top is right at the heating vent for the room. <laughs> and that I don't want books anywhere near hot air blowing out of a heating vent. That's the reason why all of those pictures on Instagram of uh, books laid open on, on soft down quilts with candles in jars artfully positioned all around. That's why they give me the heebie-jeebies. Why would anybody think that was an attractive picture? <laughs> uh, so that's it. That is, that is this bookcase. Now the only thing to decide is do we stick with the west wall and do a big west wall bookcase or do we move back to the east wall and do the big east wall bookcase? I, I don't know. I probably be entirely determined by which one is more likely to disorient Britta. <laughs> That's the whole key here. <laughs> I'll figure it out, and then we'll start over from the ground up. <laughs> Thank you, BookTube.